Habakkuk chapter 2. All right, so I wanted to get, you know, so, so sometimes when you, let's just jump into it, Habakkuk chapter 2, I, I don't want, I want to go fast because I promised to go faster in this service. Habakkuk chapter 2, some of you feel frustrated, some of you feel overwhelmed, some of you have mixed feelings and you're asking questions and this will provide a lot of clarity to you. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2, see what the Bible says, and the Lord answered and said unto me, this was a prophet, he says, write the vision and that's where I want to start from, say, hey, I, you know, it says the Lord said unto me, write the vision. It's amazing that people have visions, but how many people have written visions? There's something, this is what I've noticed about writing. There's something about writing your vision that clarifies your thoughts. I don't know if you're here with me. And God, just imagine, God, God never told us to write the scriptures. He told us to meditate on the scriptures. But when it came to vision, he didn't tell us to meditate on the vision. He told us what? To write the vision. The question is this, the thing you want to see in your future, is there a place it is written? Why is writing important? Because the first thing, writing helps us to clarify. There's something about writing that it helps you clarify your thoughts. Sometimes some of you want to marry. If you just write the qualities you have in your mind about you will marry, you will see that that list you've written, the only person you can marry is Jesus Christ. Because, because at first in your mind, you don't even know how complex, how difficult, how absorbent it is. There's just something about writing. The second thing why writing is powerful is this. <laughs> you know why writing is powerful? Sometimes life can take you to the right, take you to the left. Writing always anchors you and tells you, this is what I wanted to do. That's the power of writing. God told the prophet, he said, write the vision. The third thing writing does for you is this. Sometimes you have the opportunity to go back to what you wrote. And you will see how far God has brought you. Hey, 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 Recently, I don't know how we're cleaning the house. And I found my old check stump. When we're using checks. You know when they were using checks? My bank then was um, uh, Sky Bank. No, it was not Sky Bank. Prudent Bank. Prudent Bank. It was Prudent Bank. And... It was surprising that I would go, I saw the, you know, because when you feel the checks, you also feel the stumps, just to keep a record. How many of you used to do that? Now, some of you don't know what check is, the people that are very young. It's okay. <laughs> it's not as if you don't know what check is, but you never got the opportunity to use one because now everything is transfer, transfer. But those days, it used to be check. And I just saw checks. I would go to the bank and go and withdraw 10,000 there. And you know, when I say go to the bank, it's not an ATM machine. You go to the bank, you enter. You kill. And I said, Lord, thank you. Have you seen some of the goals you wrote 10 years ago? And you say, Lord, thank you. Because God has brought you a long way. That's the power of writing. So God says, this, he says write the vision. So one of the things writing does is that writing helps you clarify. Writing, because until you start writing some things, you will never be, so, you will see what, you may think you understand something, but when you write it down, it will really show if you understand it or not. So someone says, I want to grow spiritually. What does that mean? So the first thing says, write the vision. And the second thing it says, that it says, make it plain. The other translation says, make it clear. So you always say, I want to grow spiritually. You want to go spiritually is nonsense. There's nothing called I want to go spiritually. That vision, it's not clear. Can you be very clear? I want to increase my prayer time. I want to increase it from 20 minutes to what? 40 minutes. That's a sign of spiritual growth. Oh, I, I want to grow spiritually. How do I want to grow more spiritually? I want to become more loving. I want to be easy to forgive. It's a very definite thing. Make it clear. Because once something is not clear, it's because, it becomes very difficult to pursue. How do you even pray about things that are not clear? How do you pray about things that are not clear?
So he says, he says, write the vision, make it play. Then the third thing he says is this. He says, when you write the vision, make it say, run. That means every vision you have to make you run. Your visions are not meant for books. They are meant for actions. That's my problem with people that always have New Year resolution that they never open to the next year. But the question today, this is the big question today. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Someone say hallelujah. Oh, that's weak. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. We can do something that. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Quickly, please. See what the Bible says here. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish, or the people cast off restraint. So the question is this, why is it important to have visions and goals? This is what I've noticed. Everybody please pay attention here. And maybe you don't notice about God, but I love, it's good to understand how God works. It's good to understand how God works. Because when you understand how God works, you can tell what he's up to. You know what I notice in the Bible? Every time God wants to take a man from a level to a higher level he gives them a vision every time god wants to change someone's status he puts a goal in their mind how do i know look at look at look at moses he told moses come he says i will use you to bring israel out of the land of egypt moses said i'm nobody god says that's why i want to use you god uses visions and goals to what to take people to the next level many of you are praying god I want to go to the next level. God says, one of the things I will use to pull you to the next level is a vision. I will use a goal to pull you because a vision is going to challenge you. Luke chapter 5. Jesus met a man called Peter. He used to boat. And when he used to boat, Peter was a fisherman. And Jesus Christ told him, I would ju- you're not just going to be a fisherman. I will make you what? Fisher of men. That means an end will come. You would you will stop fishing fish. You start fishing men. Peter said, "I've never heard that people fish men before. All I'm used to is that people fish, fish. But you're saying fish men because the first thing God does is to put a vision. So let me say something to you. The vision you feel in your heart is God's invitation to come to the next level. Oh my God, that's a great place to say hallelujah. The vision you feel in your heart is God's invitation to come to the next level. But the question is this. This is a question. How come, how come people don't respond well to vision? How come? So you just feel as if I need to be more prayerful because God is calling to the next level. You just feel as if we've been doing 50 million in business. I want us to begin to do 250 million because God is calling to the next level. You just look at yourself and you're single and you have a nice car, you have all these houses and everything's going on fine. I say, why am I not married? Because God is calling you to the next level. That dissatisfaction, that vision is God's invitation to the next level. So, what does God do when he wants to really change us? He gives us vision and goals. Can I have my dumbbells, please? Glory to God. And, and this is what God does. This, this is what God does. This is what God... My brother, come. My brother, come quickly. Come. G- g- give me one of it. When God wants to build you, because when he gives you, he needs to build you. You know what God does? God gives you weight. You need to catch. Oh, yeah. And all you have to do is to move it to the side, like, no, no, not, not to the side, exactly. And do, can you do it like 20 times? Yeah, are you sure? Okay, then give me the other one. Yeah, and take it, you can take this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see how far you can go. When you're tired, just let me know. I'm waiting for you to be tired, just for you to know. Yeah, okay now. You can go because I can see you also <laughs> stumbling. See, the point is this when God wants to build you, He takes vision. And the reason why is that you can't gain weight without what? Weight. You can't gain muscles without weight. So when God, many of us say, God, grow me. But what God does is He gives you something that stretches you. The question is that when God gives you weight, what do you do? Do you dump it? Or you know, or you say, God, build me. What you thought was meant to destroy you is what to build you. But what happens to most of us, you can see my brother down, you know. <laughs> you, you can see him. So you're going to see someone like Shaggo come quickly. You're going to see someone like this guy. 
you know, and, and this guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give him the weight. I'm, I'm going to give him the weight. Yeah. You can take the other weight. I did you come quickly. I, I want to just show you. And you know what? Come quickly. And when God wants to bless him, he's been praying, Father, grow me. Grow me spiritually. Grow my finances. And God says, I want to bless you. And God will take weight. And will give him weight. Yeah. That's it. And initially, you see, the weight begins to drag in. Listen to me. God's weight is not meant to destroy you. God's weight is meant to build you. He has an option to say, Lord, I can't carry. And give someone else to carry for him. That's why, can I help you somebody here? Some of you that are always helping people, be careful. Some people you are helping, God allow them so that I can build their weight. Once you help them, they will never build muscles. They will have to depend on you forever. That's why sometimes I'm grateful for those that walk away from my life. Because if they didn't walk away, I will not build weights. If some things did not happen, I will thank God for some losses you made. Because if you didn't make those losses, you will not build weight. But in the process, God was building you. God was build. God uses vision to stretch you and to build you. Stop running away. My brother, use the weight again. See how easy this is. <laughs> yeah, it's easy because he has practice. It's easy because capacity has been stretched. Once you carry vision well, everybody will say, why is your life so beautiful? Because they can't see what happened behind the scene. They can't see the days that you were struggling. They can't see the days you almost stumbled over. You know, but, but now that it looks so nice, they see the cars, they see you wearing Nike tuxedo, appearing on the newspaper. They say, why is it so easy? But listen to me, it's so easy because a lot of work has been done behind the scene. The question is this, are you going to carry your weight or are you going to pass it to someone? That, that, and I said this, that, that, that's why sometimes people that come from wealthy homes struggle when their parents die. Because all the time, when God is building people from wealthy homes and God gives them weight, when something, something small happens, ah, daddy, I can't carry weight, they pass the weight to daddy. And because daddy is a macho, has all this financial chest, he picks up the weight. But when it's time for them to stand alone, they can't stand because they are not used to carrying weight. The question is that, are you running away from weight because it's difficult? Oh, you're running away. Are you running away? Some of you are here. There's a big, God is calling you into a deeper time of prayer. God is calling you to fasting. You always say, I can't fast. And God is saying, hey, you can fast. He said, and God said, you can fast. God is calling you and says, hey, you've been a Christian for such a long time. When did you stop tightening? Why did you stop tightening? Go back to tightening. And that's a new way to carry. Some of you, God is calling to forgiveness. God is saying, forgive and let it go. But it's a difficult way for you to carry. And, and you're struggling. And some of you, it's not a spiritual area that God is calling you for weight. God is giving you weight in your business. You've been doing 50 million every year. And God says, come up, come up, come up, come up. You can do 200. But because of how difficult 200 is, the amount of place things you have to do, you said, I don't want to do that. Some of you have run a good shop in Eko. You had a good shop in the mainland. And God said, take it to Abuja. Take it to New York. Take it to US. Take it to London. You're saying, God, you want to keep me. And God is saying, I don't want to kill you. I'm trying. I'm trying to build your weight. Some of you, you will not need to travel because it's not a way to build weight. It's an escape from weight. Praise God. I just checked if people were still in the house. Because some of you want to travel to escape weight. Not everybody. Some need to. But some of you need to stay because we're trying to be able to Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question? What is the weight that God is challenging you to carry? What is the vision that God is challenging you to carry? But you're not carrying. 
Uh, I'm going to ask them to pass the microphone around. And I'm going to start from Enoch over here. What is the weight that God is challenging you to carry that you have not carried? Yeah, give it to Enoch right here. Yeah. yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. Enoch, will you just come to the front over here? I, I hear that our, our microphone is not, our camera is not working so well. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, for a very long time, I had always thought that the weight that God wanted me to carry was for myself, my family, and my immediate environment. Um, but in the last two weeks, to give you some context, I went to Israel last week, and I got back on Sunday. And as soon as I landed um, at the airport, a friend of mine sent me a voice note that God sent me to Israel for a reason, and that I went to for a school program, but she said that what I thought I went for was not what God had sent me for, and that he's calling me for something higher, and that everything I'm doing, everything I'd always done in my life, I thought was for my family, was for myself. I wanted to make money so I could hammer, but in recent times, I'm realizing that God has opened my eyes, and it is beyond me, and I'm afraid of doing it because I don't know where to start from. I will give you an example. This morning, when I woke up, I, I, was just, I just woke up, and then the first thing the Holy Spirit did was take me to somewhere very far. I don't know where. And a woman had 2,000 naira, and out of the 2,000 naira, she was supposed to pay 900 naira levy. And I said, well, it's just 900. And the Holy Spirit said, that's the money she had made for the whole day. That 900 naira is literally what she has left is 1,100. How is she going to pay school fees? How is she going to feed her kids? Those are the people that you're supposed to help. Wow. It's still very confusing to me. I'm still very scared. I, so I, all your life, you thought all you should carry is yourself, your family. But and now, the people that work with me, work with my you. immediate environment. And, yes. But now God is saying that. It has to be more. It's, it's more than that. That's it's great. Yep. Thank you, thank you. Can I, can I, get, can I get someone else? I, I need a man to share. I, I need a man to share. So some of you are just carrying a lot of weight. Some of you, you want to share, ma'am? You want to share? Yes, please come, come, come share. Come share. Yeah, come share, you can. Hallelujah, yes. Yeah. I, that's it. I sing. You sing? Yes. Yes. I'm a worshiper. Yes. And I wanted to look at us in the camera, yeah. Yes, I, where I was coming from, I was part of the chorister before I moved into Lekki. But since I came here, I've been trying to see if I can join the choir. But the fear is that you have a lot of young people in your choir. <laughs> I might not meet up their scope. Where's Darlington? <laughs> That's my fear. That That's I will not fear. meet up. Pastor, hear me. Where's Darlington? I might not meet up their scope because uh, they have good uh, outfits. And at the moment, I'm not working. I'm a retiree. Max, Sam, come quickly. So that's my Come fear. and tell us something. So. Is it not wonderful that at this age, she's still dreaming? She wants to give you a hug and tell you that you're welcome. She wants to give you a hug and tell you that you're welcome. You are welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So, so, so just come and join. Once you, once you can do the vocal test, just come and join. Thank you. God bless you, man. Amen. See, and, and the question is this. Everybody has that which they carry. L let me get so now also in your business how God is putting so much more for you to do in your business what God is putting on you for you to do in your business yeah pastor you want to share something yeah come come there's a microphone yeah yeah tell me it's on it's on okay hallelujah so uh for the past two years God had actually been dealing with me about leaving my nine to five job wow. and starting my own business and I've been struggling, how am I going to pay this, how am I going to do this, if I leave, where will I start from? But early this year, after one of the meetings we had, Pastor Bolaji, he pushed me out to register a company. That was the first thing that I did. Wow. Then the second thing that we, we, we got a contract with um, Union Bank, you know, for some solution that we did together. 
And as we speak right now, there's also another solution we're providing for five different banks. He has pushed me. I never knew all these opportunities were out there. You never knew? I never knew. See, this is what I'm saying. Until you step out, you never know you can walk on water. That's what it is. Until you step out, you will never know. Because, listen, there's a tradition of way church teaches faith. Confess, do this, do this. But faith is more of action than talk. Faith is more of action than talk. So tell me, sir. Yeah. So yeah, so this year has just been because I took that step. Just I, one step. That step that I took. You know, sometimes all I, all I, see, this, this is the thing. Faith is taking one step when you don't see the other stairs. Oh my god, I don't know if you heard that. Sometimes you need to know faith is taking one step when you can't see what the other steps. You you can't see, but you just say, I've seen as much as I can do or go, and I take that one step, and the others are coming. Sometimes the road is very rocky. Yeah. It's not as easy as you think to make that kind of decision. But as soon as you take that step, you begin to see the opportunities on your way. There Glory are so to God. many opportunities out there. Glory to God. Who here has not taken the step that you should take? Hands up. Is, is it you? Who, who, who has not taken a step? You know you should take a step, but you've not been able to take that step. Wow, our church is so faithful, everybody. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I've taken all my steps. Uh, there's no way, you know. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you have not taken a step, I just want to hear the step. Just ra- I'm sorry, the phone's on at the back. Someone at the back. Just raise up your right hands. I, I just, well, I can't, I can't really paint someone. You just need to just take it. Go and use your discretion and give someone the microphone. Have you seen somebody? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, tell me. Um, good morning. Morning. Um, actually, um, I'm a tech person. Okay. And I work for a company here in Lekki. So what's the step you've not taken? Um, actually, I've been having that feeling to build a solution for the past six months. Yeah. And I've begun building it, but I have the fear. You have the fear? The fear. So what is your fear? Um, the fear is if I go into that tech sector, yeah. I may fail. You may fail? Yeah. And if you fail, what happens? I will lose everything. What do you mean you lose everything? Uh, uh, um, can I ask your age? Um, 27, 28. My brother, hold, hold, hold. Just wait. Look at me. There's nothing you lose at 27 you can't gather back. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. You are too young to even think of something called failure. If you go back to school now, by the time you're 31, you graduate again. You don't have children. You are not married. What are you afraid of? My brother, start tomorrow. Thank you. Praise God. This leads me to my next thing. And what's the next thing? We began to speak about vision. And we know how powerful vision is. But the question is that when I have vision, how do I move from having vision to achievement? It takes faith. That's what the Bible says. What's all the Bible says? Hebrews 11.1. 1. I want to show you something. Hebrews 11.1. 1. See what the Bible says here. Hey, I have... I have because, because some of you, you are here and God is calling you to ministry. And that takes faith. It takes faith. Some of you, God is asking you to step into a new industry. It takes faith. Some of you have been so hurt. Last month, you had the teachings on relationships. And you're, you're trying to love again. You're trying to be, And that takes faith. Because your feeling wants to take you to your past. But your faith wants to take you to your future. Your feeling wants to always pull you to your past. But your faith wants to take you to your future. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It says, what you're hoping for, what will give you substance, what will make it reality, is faith. And that's why faith is important. If you want to do big things in life, if you want to do significant things in life, if you want to defy odds, there must be a lot of faith within you. Listen, you know, like just some days ago, I spoke to a woman that had cancer, and she's now cancer-free. 
and she began to tell me he said when i had cancer i told myself nobody will take care of my children but me this cancer will not kill me i will kill it that is the kind of faith i'm talking about that although you've not seen it you're totally convinced that this will become reality although you live in this country a third world nation you're totally convinced that in this country i'll be a multi-millionaire in dollars although you're struggling with sexual addiction struggling with nicotine addiction you tell yourself that i believe that i'll be set free and i'll be clean again the major thing is don't throw in the towel so soon What does faith do for you? The first thing faith does for you is this. Faith will regulate your fear and doubt. Because as you go through life, <laughs> in your path of achievement to vision, it will never be the way you thought about it. You know why? Most of us never think of mountains and problems. We always think of it going easy. And the way God is, this is how God speaks. You are here. This is the point you are. And God will tell you a vision about that place. And God will tell you about, watch it now. God will tell you about this place. But guess what God doesn't tell you? God tells you about where you are and where you're going to. But he doesn't tell you what you will meet in between the way. He doesn't tell you about the rejections, the problem, the funding, the heartbreaks you will meet in between the way. And so, when we're coming from here and we're going this way, and as we're going and we meet those rejection, you're like, God, why is this happening? He says, I didn't say faith makes things easy. He said faith makes things achievable. But you're going to grow through it. You're going to go through it. So what does faith do? See, this is why faith is powerful because faith regulates your fear and doubt. And a lot of you have personal fear, fear of failure. Just like that guy that shared, you're just afraid that you will fail. Some of you have the fear of success that if you succeed, you will lose yourself. Some of you have fear of speaking. What does faith do? Faith regulates your fear and doubt. Let, let me show you how powerful doubt, fear is. Mark chapter 25 in verse 20. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So the first thing you have to sort out is the scene of a vision. Where should I, what was my future look like? Where should I be? And that's one of the key things we're going to pray about. We're going to pray for First Chronicles 12. The Bible says the sons of Ezekiel had understanding of the times. But when you have vision... So now you need faith to get it to work. So what does faith do? See what the Bible says here. You know, um, Matthew 25. And this is the story of the five talents. I, I, I'm going to, I, I need someone else to tell me another story. See, see, see what the Bible says. And this was when he had given some people five talents, two talents, and one talent. And see what the Bible says here. Um, let's read from verse, I'm just trying to jump. Verse 22. And he also that received the two talents came, just like the one that received the five, and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. I behold, I have gained two more talents beside them. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a little. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. The Bible says this, verse 24. And he that received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man. Reaping when thou have not sown, and gathering when thou have not strawed. Verse 25. Can we read it together once ago? Thank you. See, see. Why didn't this person do anything with the one talent? Why? I was afraid. Why? This is why faith regulates fear. Because fear has the capacity to paralyze your potentials. There's a lot you can be. You know, in the first service, you know, as I asked the question, what should you be? One guy said, I said, what should you be if you're not afraid? And the guy took the microphone. I, I saw him Google and he took the microphone and his wife was next to him. Very lovely couple. And I said, if I'm not afraid, I should have been preaching by now. I said, what? And I asked the wife. The wife said, that's true. He has a calling. I, I, I could never see it on them. And I said, is it not imagine 
that with all the calling, fear has covered the calling. What potentials do you have that fear has covered? And it's not as if the potential is not there. But it's totally covered by fear. So much so that we don't see the potential again. All we see is the fear. You need to write down in your book. What will I be doing right now if I was not afraid? Write it down somewhere. Because that's how God is going to stretch you. Write it down somewhere. Don't just listen to me. Write it down somewhere. All of your life, write in the comment section. What will I be doing right now if I was not afraid? Sir, what will you be doing right now? What will you be doing right now if you're not afraid? What will you be doing if you're not afraid? Give him the microphone, yeah? No, behind him. Yeah, tell me. You need a minute more. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really know. You don't really know? But I just have this feeling that... So what that, will you be doing? What will you be doing in business? What will you be doing in politics? What will you be doing right now if you're not afraid? Uh, in politics, I'm tapping something very powerful. What's something very powerful? Maybe likely um, House of Rep or something. You'll be going for House of Rep? Yeah. Uh, so you, you have that potential. I went for House of Assembly once yeah. and... The experience was bad, so... And, and because of that, you stopped going? No, I just stopped. You just stopped? What would you be doing if you were not afraid? Did you see that? One experience destroyed the potential, paralyzed the potential. That's what fear does. One divorce makes you feel as if you're a failure. That's what fear does. Give, give it to my sister here. My, my sister here. You tell me, what would you be doing if you're not afraid? Yeah. Yeah, you, you know the lady Yeah. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, tell me. Um, I think my business would be better. Wow. Be bigger, yeah. It, um, it, it would be doing like times how much in profits? A whole lot. A whole lot. A whole lot. If you were not afraid. Yeah, if I was not afraid. I'm not really a people person. Why are you not a people person? Uh, people can be annoying. Yes, um, because they pay you a certain amount of money, they feel they can talk to you anyhow. I agree. I don't treat people that way, so I don't see... So have you thought about employing someone that can, that can deal with them, so you don't have to deal with that? I tried that. It didn't work out well because so why not I, I, try still, again? I still had to do the sales myself because she wasn't... So why not? It was a waste of money. Yeah, but, but, but why not try again? I probably will. I was afraid. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody here is two, three steps away from quantum growth if they are not afraid. You know what you hide your fear with? You hide your fear with I'm busy. It's your afraid. You hide your fear that it's not my thing. It's fear. How many of you here, God is calling you to leadership in church and you say, I'm busy. We see you're busy, but you sleep 10 hours in a day. Even people that are not as busy as you don't sleep that much. But the reason why you, you keep, see, you're afraid, but you keep giving yourself these great stories. You package these stories and tell yourself and sell these stories to yourself. When I, when, when, I, I mean, a lot of, some of the people know me here when, when I was younger and I was in school. When I had the call to start a church, should I tell you the truth? I never thought I could do it. I ran away for a long time. When I say long time, months. But thank God. The, the reason why is that until you step out of the water, you will never know what is possible. The only reason why we celebrate harvesters today was because many years ago, I took a decision to step out of the water. All of you know that we're buying this property that's going to serve like our main church and all of that. So during the week, all the staff, we went there. Pastor John went there to us. And they saw the facility on the side for the first time. And I told him to Mrs. John, I said, how do you feel about the facility? Say, first of all, the video we saw was fraud. It's, it doesn't show the facility. I said, how do you feel about this? And, it, and she told me, I couldn't remember this. He said, I'm just blown away. He said, it's nothing I ever dreamt about. He said, I remember those going for a conference in the U.S. in the church. And we saw that oh, nice auditorium and space. And you say, one day we'll have this. And I'm like, yeah, we will. But 
but <laughs> how will it happen? Then he said, what I remembered was one day I was just from a restaurant called Spoon Feeders. He said, when I came to Spoon Feeders to see you, you were trying to buy lunch, but you didn't have money. He said, and I looked at you that day and said, with all the faith he preaches, money to buy lunch. He said, I remember that story when I entered this facility. The thing is this, faith called the things that be not as though they were. Even when there was no money in my pocket, in another realm, I could touch the money. In another realm, I could see the money. In another realm, I could interact with the money. So because, see what about, about it, faith calling things that are not, hold on, listen to yourself because now you may sound stupid. The Bible says faith called the things that are not. Can things that are not be things? Think, 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 think. Nothing cannot be thing. So for them to be things, they are not things in the physical realm. But they are things in what? Another realm. So what faith is is this? When I can't see things in the natural realm, I begin to interact with things what? In the invisible realm. So when they say that, what about your baby? You say that, oh, I have my baby because although the baby is not in the natural realm, in the spiritual realm, he says, there shall not be barren amongst them. Glory to God. Although in the natural realm, I have a cancer, but in the spiritual realm, I have what? My healing. Although in the natural realm, I don't have money in my bank account. In the spiritual realm, the Bible says, the Lord shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Are you, I said, in the natural realm, I don't have my, my approval, but in the spiritual realm, Isaiah 45 verse 15, he said clearly, God is working behind the scene. So people say, why are you confident? I'm confident because I function in two realms. So when you judge me based on the physical realm, you will make a big mistake. Judge me based on another realm. Glory to God. Because that realm is superior to this realm. Glory to God. He says we walk by faith, not by sight. So when things don't go well in the natural realm, I look into the spiritual realm. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I will buy the tape. Praise God. I wanted to notice this. See, there was a church, this, there was a time, I mean, I could tell you stories. There was a time our church closed down midweek services. We could not pay. You know how much it was to pay for rent? 3,000 naira. We could not afford 3,000 naira. And we raised all the money. We couldn't buy. When our church started, we could not buy original instruments. We were buying fake instruments. We knew they were fake. So all of you that were in fake gookie, you know, it's okay. All of us started from there. I, I know all the people that look beside you and driving G-Wacon, they didn't start from that. There was a time they were going to Aswani. Praise God. But, but they, they were a swanny but looked as if they bought it in VI until VI eventually caught up with them. Don't let what you are going through give you heart attack. You are work in progress. Are you here somebody? Are you here somebody? So what does faith, let me tell you what faith does. So the first thing faith does is this. Faith begins to regulate your fear because your fear can paralyze your initiative. Faith begins to regulate. So he begins to regulate your fears and your doubt. The second thing that faith does is this. And this is where I'm going to close. <laughs> this is what I love about faith. First John chapter 5 verse 4. This is what I love about faith. This is one of my most powerful things. Is it faith breeds confidence. First John chapter 5 verse 4. Oh, faith breeds confidence. See what the Bible says. Verse 14, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, let's leave for verse 4 for now. For verse 4. It says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. First one, verse 14. Faith breeds confidence. He, he says, it says, This is the confidence we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to will, he what? Do you know what the Bible means? It says, once your prayer has no confidence, your prayer will not work. 
Look at it. Ladies and gentlemen, look up here, please. One of the ways you will know that you are under spiritual attack is that your confidence is attacked. How do you know if you're under attack? You just see that thing that was sitting. Your business will crumble and you begin to fear. Once you start fearing, know that something has gone wrong in the spirit. Because if fear does not enter, you will do it. Once that thing says your mind will not survive, know that you have you been attacked. The way, one of the ways you know you have been attacked is that your confidence will go. The reason why is this. When your confidence is up, that shows the attack did not work. Are you here, somebody? What does faith do? Faith breeds confidence. What does confidence look like? <laughs> Hebrew, sorry, Proverbs 30 verse 30. This is my last scripture. What does confidence look like? Proverbs chapter 30 verse 30. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 30. Oh, glory to God. Are, are you ready? I wanted to read this verse and put it somewhere in your mind and write it somewhere. Let's use it together. Want to go? this is what confidence looks like this is what faith looks like the bible says the lion is the strongest of the beast and does not turn aside for what for any this is what confidence confidence will not say troubles will not come he said but i'm not backing out he said the, the, the lion doesn't is not the king of the beast is the king of the beast the strongest but when he stays on his track he doesn't fall aside he says the lion doesn't turn aside for any oh glory to god if you like bring inflation i don't turn aside if you like bring devaluation i don't turn aside if you like bring emotional issues i don't turn aside if you like bring doctor's report i don't that. see faith doesn't know how to give up any smart thing i'm not business again any smart thing i'm not going to house of breath again no sir he says the lion confront and he doesn't sort aside. any smart thing i will not marry again come down and it's nothing. I'm not the business. I, it, it, no. The journey of faith is an upward hill. Once you stop, you start going down. Give me my pool rubber. And we'll do it finally. Yeah. Quickly. This is what faith looks like. Remember, you know. This is what faith looks like. Just put it on him. Everything is trying to pull you back. And faith says, no, we are going forward. We are going forward. We are going. That's what it's like. Listen, the question is this. Do you have the boldness to go forward? Or is life, come forward, or your life life to pull you back? Or when it's pulling you back, what do you do? You just give up and say, see where life has put my marriage to. It's okay. See what life has put my finance to. It's okay. See what life has put my best to. It's okay. Or you say, no matter how he pulls me, my brother, let me show you myself. G give me this thing. Yeah. Put it on me. Yeah. So, so this is it. No matter how life pulls me, one thing is constant. Pull me backwards now. Life, I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to. This is faith. This is faith. I'm going to. I've had marital heartbreaks, but I'm still fighting. I'm still fighting. I've had business set back, but I'm, I'm, I'm still fighting. I, I'm, I'm still fighting. This is what life looks like. I'm still fighting. Or you're going to just like, life, pull me back. And let's stay here. How many people have a fight in them? How many people here have a fight in them? How many people here have a fight in them? Say, I do. You do. You are harvesters. We don't quit. You are harvesters. We don't give up. No, no, no. We are risk takers. That's what faith does. We are risk takers. We get up. We don't, we don't lie down. We get up. We are faith-filled people. Say with me. Say, we are faith-filled people. That's who we are. We don't give up. We don't settle. We don't quit. All we do is advance. All we do is win. All we do is go. We don't surrender to negative report. We don't surrender to inflation report. All we do is win because this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Stand on your feet and shout hallelujah. I'm not saying it to be easy.
is he? I'm saying that whatever it takes will win the battle. Whatever it takes will have a testimony. We will not surrender to cancer. We will not surrender to barrenness. We will not surrender to unforgiveness. We will fight. He said, up to now, the kingdom of God suffer violence. And the violent take it by force. Praise God. You train yourself that I have a fight in me. Doctor said this is the would die. He said, not me. We don't die here. We change report here. We behave like Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel said, who are thou mountain before Zerubbabel? They said there's no, there's no capital. We'll find it. They said there's no sale. We'll sell our markets. Glory to God. They said things are going down. We said things are going up. Oh, glory to God. They said everybody is borrowing. We are lenders. They said all minds are collapsing. Our own are thriving. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. We are, the, we are God's takeover generation. Oh my God. We are God's takeover generation. I wrote something. I said, we are God's elite army. The same way the, U, the, the, um, the, the U.S. have the seals. I said, harvesters is God's elite army. Where others don't go, we go. Where they can't get to, we get there. Oh, we are taking over for Christ. Taking over industries and sectors. Oh, glory to God. We will burn our fear. We will drown our doubt. We will take the risk. In the name of Jesus, someone shout amen. We are able. That's our calling. Oh, glory, brother. Glory, brother. We are able. Caleb says, let's go at once. For we are well. The question is this. And this is a question today. Is fear holding you back and you're settled? Or you're going to start pushing? What step do you need to take for your children? What step do you need to take for your marriage? What step do you need to take for your relationship? Many of you, God is even calling into leadership in church and says, you need to be more consistent spiritually. Every Sunday, make it there. You need to take up a cell and lead a cell. And say, I can't. No, 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 no. Don't say you can't. You can't. Don't say you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. I want to ask you a question. And this is my final question to you. Will your children know you as a dad of faith or a mom of faith? Will they know you as a man? Will your children, when they describe you, be able to write on your, on your tomb and say, my father was a man of faith or my mother was a man of faith. And when I say faith, not a man that goes to church, a man that lived his faith because they saw him live his faith. Or they say, my father was sometimes faith, sometimes doubt. Or what that was a Peter, a total doubter. Thomas, brother. Some of you, the next step will be to maybe start tightening. And you've been struggling because it's never enough. But all the time you've been not been tightened has ever been enough. The next step could be to speak in tongues. Hey, hey, how will I have been have not done this all my life? It's one step. One for one step, I mean to cut off all the negative habits. We walk by faith, not by sight. I want us to go ahead and pray.